professional. We are so glad you joined us on tonight. So we're going to look at the family and going deeper or growing deeper. But anyway, however, we're going to look at family tonight. So we're going to get started with a word of prayer. So God, we come to you this evening. We just praise you. We thank you. We magnify you. We exalt you because you are God and there is no other. God, we lift up your name because you are a great and an awesome God. We lift up those that are grieving God due to recent deaths in their family, God. We ask that you would cover them this evening and comfort them. We lift up those that are in the hospital that are dealing, have been diagnosed with COVID. God, so many more cases are popping up, but we know that you are God, you're aware of everything, and we just have to continue to, to trust and believe and thank you for what you're doing and what you're going to do. So we praise you for that this evening, God. And as we look at the family and go deep in the family, we hope that we'll be able to take something away from this and apply it to our lives, um, apply it to our family. So we praise you, we thank you, and we magnify you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this evening, we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 45, and we're basically going to look at verses 1 through 15. Once again, that's Genesis, Genesis chapter 45, verses 1 through 15. And to get a full understanding of what I'm just going to touch on this evening, you really need to, I suggest that you start reading at Genesis chapter 37 and then catch up to 45 in your own time. Um, so I'm going to read from the passage of scripture first, and then I will go into my discussion of it. So in Genesis 45, the Christian Standard Bible version reads as follows. Joseph could no longer keep his composure in front of all his attendants. So he called out, send everyone away from me. No one was with him when he revealed his identity to his brothers, but he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and also Pharaoh's household heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But they could not answer him because they were terrified in his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, please come near me, come near me. And they came near him. I am Joseph, your brother, he said, the one you sold into Egypt. And now don't be grieved or angry with yourselves for selling me here because, because God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there will be more, there will be five more years without plowing or harvesting. God sent me ahead of you to establish you as a remnant within the land and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Return quickly to my father and say to him, this is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me without delay. You can settle in the land of Goshen and be near me, you and your children and your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, and all you have. There I will sustain you for there will be five more years of famine. Otherwise, you, your household and everything you have will become destitute. Look, your, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin can see that I'm the one speaking to you. Tell my father about all my glory in Egypt and about all you have seen and bring my father here quickly. Then Joseph threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept and Benjamin wept on his shoulder. Joseph kissed each of his brothers as he wept and afterwards his brothers talked with him. That's verse 15. So what I'm really looking at us to see this evening is this is the story of Joseph and his 12, Jacob, I'm sorry, and his 12 sons. The second to the youngest is Joseph. So Joseph is the center of this story. And Joseph is the second of Joseph's 12, the second to the youngest of Joseph's 12 sons. Um, however, we must also look at a couple of things going on here. Joseph was a favored child. Um, he was born as his father was older and the son after him was Benjamin. Rachel was their mother and Rachel died um, during childbirth with Benjamin. So Joseph had dreams <clears throat> that the entire family would bow down to him and the brothers hated him and his father was furious with these words he was saying because he was basically saying, you're going to bow down to me. That's why you gotta go back and look at Genesis 37 and catch up with tonight, verse chapter 45. 
Um, his brother sold him into slavery at the age of 17. They really hated him so badly that when he came to check on them, um, the dad, Jacob, had sent him to check on them. And uh, they were just angry when they saw him. As soon as they saw him coming, they, they started plotting on what they were going to do. And so they put him in a well and um, they took off. The, his father had this, his father played favorites. So in families, sometimes that's unfortunate, but it does happen that favorites are played and sometimes the results are not that well. So for Joseph, the result was not that well. They snatched the colorful robe off of him that the father had made for him, threw him in a cistern or a well. And then when they saw some people traveling through, um, they were going heading on their way to Egypt. So they pulled him out and sold him, <laughs> sold their own brother to these other people that were traveling to Egypt. And then he got sold to the captain of the army in Egypt. Okay, so that's just a little history. Uh, once again, Genesis 37, chapter through verse, chapter 45, you'll get a whole, read it in a version that will make sense to you and you'll really be able to understand where I'm going with this. So after about 13 years, he is second in command to Pharaoh at the age of about 30 because he had a relationship with God and was able to reveal the dreams Pharaoh had that none of his magicians could reveal. So. Also, as you're reading those chapters, you'll find that he was able to um, tell what the dreams made uh, were that a cupbearer had and a baker had. And then finally, it was Pharaoh that had a dream um, and he didn't understand it. It didn't make any sense to him. None of his magicians could reveal it. But the, um, the, cup, the cup bearer remembered the dream that Joseph had told would was gonna be the result of his dream. And so then he mentioned him to Pharaoh and they went and pulled him out of prison because he was in prison at this time. Not only was he sold into Egypt, but he was also um, the captain of the guard's wife lied and said he tried to rape her. He didn't try to rape her. She just lusted after him because he was young and good looking. And so she basically got him in trouble and he was put into prison. And so why is this deep? <laughs> it's deep deep because God allowed Joseph to be sold into slavery by his own brothers. That's pretty deep. I mean, Joseph was just out there looking for them so he could go back and make a report to Pops, Jacob, and tell him what had what was going on with the brothers. But as soon as they saw him, they became enraged and they, they had started plotting all kinds of things of what they were going to do to him. So what I want us to understand is God allows things to happen in our lives, family, and the nation that we don't understand. He allows these things to happen. He allowed this to happen to Joseph. It wasn't Joseph had dreamed these dreams, but the way it turned out, I'm sure it was not how he thought it was going to turn out like we do in our own lives. Sometimes certain things happen that we have not planned, but it's allowed to happen, just like things have been allowed to happen in our families and in this nation. The second thing I want to mention is God was with Joseph the whole time, giving him favor. So when he was sold into um, the captain of the guard, he immediately had favor with, um, with the captain of the guard. Um, and so then after that, um, he was thrown into prison and immediately had favor with the person that was head over the prison. And so that just goes to show no matter what your circumstances are, how bad they may look, God still has given us favor. Um, the next point is God in his word indicates he will never leave us or forsake us, even in troubling times. So God God in his time allowed the revelation of all that happened um, until that time and Joseph confirmed God allowed him to be sent ahead for their preservation. So they didn't understand, his brothers didn't understand what was going on because they came and they were trying to get food and he immediately recognized his brothers but because he had been transformed to look like an Egyptian, they didn't know who he was. They And then he was speaking of course, he'd been there 13 years, so now he's learned the Egyptian language. And so, but he knew what they were saying when they were talking amongst themselves and they had no idea. So God will reveal his plan in his time. For Joseph, it was 13 years. It could be a shorter period of time or it could be longer. It could be 20 years or more. The deep part is this. The key is to stay focused on God in the trial, in the storm, in the pain. He will open our eyes and reveal what wasn't clear to us in his time. So sometimes when these things are going on, we are like, okay, God, reveal to me what's going on. Show me what's happening. I don't understand why all this is going on in my life. And 
I just need you to show me God and reveal it to me, God. Um, but what we have to do is to just stay focused on him, to stay in his word. That's the key. Stay in his word, focus on your family. Um, and sometimes in our families, we have uh, disagreements. We have, um, I don't know, envy, jealousy, strife. All of those things can be within the family. But what God wants us to do is focus on him and not focus on anything that has happened in our family that we haven't agreed with or has been hurtful. So I just want to also leave you with 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7. It reads as follows. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy, is not boastful, is not arrogant, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not irritable, and does not keep a record of wrongs. So Joseph didn't keep a record of the wrongs that his brothers did. He knew what they did, but he wasn't like living it over and over again every day. Um, love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So as we get ready to close this evening, once again, remember the key is to stay focused in your family on God. So whatever's going on in your family, focus on God. Study your word, fast, pray, but keep your focus on God, not the situation, not what's going on. Sometimes we even have to ask for forgiveness in our families or go in and seek forgiveness because, you know, in scripture, it says seven times 70 is what Jesus told Peter because Peter just thought seven times was going to be good enough. But seven times 70 is like 490 times. And so that can just be for one offense. So we have to learn to forgive. And the deep part here is to stay focused on God in the trial, in the storm, or in the pain. So thank you for listening this evening. And we're now going to close out in prayer. Father God, we come to you. We praise you. We thank you. We magnify you for this time of being in your word. God, we just give you glory for being God. We are just so grateful that you are God and you are God all by yourself. And we just lift up your name. We exalt you as holy and we exalt you as just a wonderful God. And as we um, approach tomorrow, tomorrow, the inauguration, God, we ask things that things be done decently and in order. We come against any spirit of rebellion and defiance and disrespect and lawlessness, God. We come against that right now. We decree and declare that those things will not take place on tomorrow, that this will go decently and in order because you're a God of decent and decency and order. Um, we also pray against mental illnesses in our families, um, any addictions, anger, envy, jealousy, confusion, hatred, and sickness. And we just lift up our families. We lift up this nation. We lift up the body of Christ, the body of believers. We ask that you would just heal right now, Father. Heal us emotionally. Heal us physically. Heal us financially, God. Help us to stay focused on you because staying focused on you allows us to go deeper. And that's what we are doing at Road to Damascus. We're going deeper in your word. We're studying your word. We're looking at all different angles of how to go deeper in the word of God. Thank you, God, this evening. And it's in Jesus' name. Um, I forgot anybody not saved, have not accepted the Lord as their personal savior. Now is your time. Romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, that thou shalt be saved, him being Jesus. And so he's been raised from the dead and sitting at the right hand of the father. And you too can say that in your heart and believe, get in a church where the word is being taught. Learn what God's word says for yourself and get it in your heart by memorizing scripture. And so it's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Thank you.